and welcome to another episode of Fubar. Today we keep on talking reinvent launches that I really like and I think this one is one of those small pre reinvent launches that didn't got a lot of heat but I think it's quite cool. I've been wanting something like this for a while so I hope you enjoy it as well. The launch I'm talking about is the now support for Lambda for event filtering for SQS, uh, Dynamo, and Kinesis data streams. So what this means? Well, this means that uh, now you can input in your Lambda when you are consuming, uh, when you are defining the event trigger, what is the exact pattern you want this Lambda to get invoked with. So for example, uh, if you're using Kinesis, you can say that you want this Lambda only to get invoked when the Kinesis um, event is coming with, uh, I don't know, these particular attributes and it can go into the JSON. Uh, you can compare and, and you can do all kinds of things. So the rules for defining this filtering criteria is exactly the same rules that you will use for um, event bridge. So uh, I leave you the link so you can check it out how you can define these rules. But for the demo, I will just use equal, but you can do comparisons and you can do more complex uh, things. So that's quite cool. For example, you have a queue and you decide, okay, I want to, this is maybe natural for you as well. I have messages. I want to, to trigger this Lambda when the messages for this queue have the, I don't know, order and I want to send messages to this other Lambda when the detail says refound or something like that. I don't know, use case, A or use KP. And you will say, this is cool. Now I can have many Lambdas that get triggered uh, by different messages from my queue and you will be wrong. So Lambda and SQS can only have one uh, trigger. So one Lambda function to one queue and all the other messages that don't pass the filter, they get dropped. So that's something to have in mind. In my demo, I will show you how to do this with SQS. And if you add another Lambda, because I did, <laughs> with a different filtering, it will not work. So that's important for having in mind all the messages that are not filtered get dropped. Good. Uh, I will show you a demo with uh, Dynamo and with SQS. If you want to see the demo with Kinesis, it's in the launch blog. Uh, so I'll leave you the link in the, in the description so you can go and check it out. Uh, but basically, uh, now you can add these filtering messages. So for example, for Dynamo, I find it extremely convenient, uh, more than for queues, I will say, because it happens quite often that um, you have a Dynamo stream and you want only to trigger the Lambda function whenever you are removing or updating or modifying, not in all the situations of the Dynamo stream. Uh, and you could not do that. So basically before, whenever you were, I don't know, you have these tables and you were inputting something into a table and then you want to update uh, another data source or do some operation, for example, Elasticsearch or whatever, uh, then that Lambda function will always get triggered. And when that Lambda function gets triggered, it's a little bit more costly. And basically you're running things that you don't need to run because the first check that you're going to do is like, if the event uh, type of this <laughs> Dynamo source is like modify, then continue. But if it's not, then stop and return. Okay. So that invocation was a little pointless. So I really, really like it for that. And I think I will be using it a lot. So uh, you invoke less lambdas, it's cheaper, it's nicer, and you define it there. So let's go to the demo and see how you do this with a uh, SAM. This is basically some basic cloud formation uh, at the end of the day. So uh, you can see all the information in the, in the description box for the launch blog and for the other uh, documentations. And as always, the code is available in GitHub because I made code for this, so I will give it to you. So uh, let's open this. Uh, for this example, I will show you first the Dynamo part, then I will show you the queue part. So they're independent, but they're in the same file because why not? So the Dynamo part we define as function that gets triggered with a Dynamo stream. And here you can see that there is this new part that says filtering criteria. And in this filtering criteria, we basically said like whenever we insert something into this Dynamo stream, execute this Lambda. And the cool thing here is that it not only works with the uh, event name, like insert, remove or modify, but it works also 
with whatever is inside in the DynamoDB record. So when you uh, have the, the DynamoDB stream and that's sent over to the Lambda function to get invoked, you will see that there is the record. And there you will have this DynamoDB object that has the uh, ID of the Dynamo item, it has the what kind of event happened, it has the whole item if you ask for it. So you can do uh, quite interesting uh, operations here. But for this example, I just decided to filter everything that uh, gets inserted in the table, needs to trigger this lambda. And then I created the, the table, basically it's a normal Dynamo table, but with uh, the, the stream type just to send uh, the stream with the new image of whatever was created. Very simple. And then in the uh, handler, basically I have a Lambda function and that Lambda function just print the event in the console. I, I really, really a great developer. <laughs> so let's get this in action and I will go to Dynamo, to that table, and I will add an item in the database basically by just creating item. There is already one there. I'll create a new one, test one to three, four, <laughs> always very original. And that should invoke my Lambda function. So if we go back to the code and we look at the logs, then um, we can see that something was invoked a few seconds ago and there is uh, my console log. So it works. <laughs> if we remove something from that table, then we will not see anything in the Lambda logs because the Lambda was not invoked because it didn't match the filtering. So we can refresh the logs as much as we want, but nothing will happen. <laughs> so now let's do the example with the queue. So I have a Lambda function similar that uh, gets invoked when there is a message in a queue and I will make the batch size to one. So I don't need to send million messages. And again, we have this filter in place and here the filter with queues, it happens inside the body. So whatever is inside of the body of the message gets filtered. So uh, you can do conditionals, you can do comparisons, you can do whatever uh, the event bridge rules allows you to do. Here I just doing if the body uh, attribute data is equal A, then let's trigger this Lambda function. And you can do things with JSON as well. So again, my process also prints the event in the, in the console and that's kind of it. So I will use the AWS CLI to execute this. So I will just send a message to that queue. So you can see the queue URL there and I have the message body to match that uh, filtering rule. So yes, now uh, if we wait a bit, this takes a while because there is some kind of delay in the amount that since we've sent the message that the message gets there and blah, blah, blah. It takes a bit, a couple of seconds, but be patient. I'm not, so I'm just clicking around <laughs> like a magnetic in the screen until it happens a few seconds ago, yay. And there we can see that um, the thing has been uh, triggered. If we send the message again, boom, this gets triggered again. So nothing weird. Um, and again, we need to wait for, for a few seconds. And yeah, so let's wait. It happens, <laughs> trust me. Uh, so yeah, now it's happened. So now if we change the uh, message that we sent to the queue to B, then we can refresh as long as we want. This Lambda function is not getting booked. So yeah, <laughs> that's my demo for you today. I know it's super small, but I think this is a super cool launch. It will help you a lot and to make cleaner code, less lines of code, less amount of debugging, less simpler unit tests, because now you don't need to unit test for that. So I like when things can be done in the infrastructure. And you can see this configuration from uh, also from the AWS console when you go to the um, to the event source triggering there, you will be able to see it and also to modify it. So if you don't like infrastructure as code, I'm pretty sure you're not watching these videos because I'm all about it. But <laughs> if you like to do it manually, there you can do it. And as well, you can do it with CDK and all these amazing EIC platforms. And that's it for me for today. Share this video, comment it, and give likes and thumbs up because YouTube likes that. And I see you next week with another episode of Uber. Ciao, ciao.